Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, as you can see, we are in the set of NBC's The Office today. Um, we found some extra leftover money and we flew out to California to be able to film this lesson. Um, the plane was really empty because of the big Rona going around, not to be confused with Big Tuna, who is Jim Halpert. Um, but yeah, here we are. So we're gonna be kicking off a new series today. Um, and the title of the series is Love and Hate. So we live in a world that loves to throw those two words around like crazy. So think about it. Um, you love Starbucks, but you hate school. Or think about it in sports. You know, you love your team. You love your home team, whatever team you support, but you hate that rival team. You know, for me, I love the Saints with all my heart. Um, but if you talk to me about the Atlanta Falcons, I think they're the scum of the earth. Um, but you, so, you know, you get the idea. We live in a very love hate center culture and, and love is a huge deal to us. You know, most movies that come out have an overarching, uh, love story, um, through them, you know, hello, rom-coms and, and songs that top the charts when it comes to like the billboards and whatever, they're usually about love. You know, think about every Taylor Swift album is about a new boyfriend that she's in love with or has broken up with. Um, um, and another staggering fact about love is that Americans alone spend $21 billion a year on just Valentine's Day. Just Valentine's Day every year rakes in $21 billion a year because of how obsessed we are with love. You know, and even here at church, we talk about how much God loves us and how much we're supposed to love each other. Um, but then on the other hand, we also have the side of the culture that loves to hate um, you know, we make fun of celebrities and, and TikTok people. You know, we hate, sometimes we even hate people in our lives, you know, secretly, of course, and in group text messages and whatever. Um, and we may not always say these things out loud to them, but most of us have an opinion about everything and everyone. So my question is, if love is such a big deal, why does hate and hating people seem like such a natural part of life? Now, there's a lot of things we could say about the differences um, that people hate on people, but since we don't have a ton of time, I wanna talk about one, one thing that we do, and that is gossip. Now, before you roll your eyes and, and you dismiss me, um, let me tell you this, adults are just as bad, if not worse, than teenagers and students when it comes to gossiping. But we have to admit that being in school, well, you know, in school before this whole quarantine thing happened, um, you know, it made it easier. You know, th think about it. You would be in the same space all day long. Um, you're bored. Uh, talking about people makes things interesting. You know, people just talk. So it's easy to bring up some of the worst moments in people's lives. And you may be thinking to yourself, I don't ever talk about others, but I know people that do it all the time. But the truth is, is that we all do it. You know, when it comes to gossip, I think we all need to take a look in the mirror and ask ourselves if we really think that we don't do it and we really don't talk about people. Do we contribute to this type of hating? And I mean, with everything we have going on, why is it so easy for us to gossip and talk about people? You know, why do we have this attraction to talking about others or, you know, quote unquote, spilling the tea? Um, you know, I think there's a few reasons. Uh, number one is our insecurities. If we can point out what is wrong with people, it may make us feel better about our own faults. Or maybe it's because it's easy bonding. You know, you, you think about it, what brings people closer than joking about someone or something and talking about them? Or maybe it's just fun. It is entertaining to be the first person to know the details or be in the middle of the big news about somebody. Or maybe there's a competitive advantage. You know, some of us want to be the best. So sometimes we mention how not great someone is so that we can look better. Or maybe it's the truth. Sometimes we actually justify what we say um, about others by saying, well, it's the truth. Since it's fact, it's okay to talk about. Or maybe it's just an innocent intention. Sometimes we have that really good friend that we share everything with, and that includes everything about someone that maybe we weren't supposed to talk about. Now, as I said, this isn't an issue just for students. It's, it's a people thing. Um, we all know those adults, you know, maybe a teacher or a coach or a uh, co-worker at our job or whatever that maybe talk a little bit more than they should um and, and we call it different names you know for for the girls it may be gossiping and for the guys it may be called trash talking but at the end of the day we're all part of the same exact conversation um there are shows and podcasts and videos dedicated to hating on people and their choices social media makes it so easy for us to be hateful 
um, and about famous people or just normal people. You know, what a time to be alive. And, and, but isn't it true that even if gossip is widely accepted, you know, even if it's something that is okay by our world standard, isn't it true that we still feel like it's something that we shouldn't do? Uh, I mean, if you've ever been gossiped about, you know how bad that sucks. You know, it's no fun to be the topic of conversation whenever you're not around. And especially when those people don't have all the details or maybe don't even know who you are. The only time we want to be talked about behind our backs is if somebody's complimenting us or saying really nice things about us. Now, you know, when I was, um, when I was in, uh, in college, I used to play a lot of Ultimate Frisbee. Um, and I... I uh, was pretty good at it. Uh, you know, I, it's something I picked up fairly quickly and something you got to understand at Ozark, the Christian college I went to, Ultimate Frisbee was almost close to a cult. Like, you know, we played it two nights a week and it was always, you know, 40, 50 people would show up and we would play massive games for hours and hours and hours. And it was a ton of fun. Um, and, and since I was a pretty good player, uh, I was kind of one of the leaders of the group. And um, this led me to kind of get a big head about me. Um, and there was this, there was one of the guys that would come out and play every once in a while. He wasn't very good. He wasn't super athletic. Um, and so it just became easy for me to just bring that kid down uh, behind his back. And I would talk about him, and we, me and my buddies would laugh and, and make jokes about it and, and whatnot. And I didn't know how, I didn't know how far my words would go. Um, and inevitably one day it got back to him. Now, fast forward about two years after that, he, he had left the college for other reasons, and he was working um, in the National Park Service, uh, I think um, somewhere in Washington. And I remember getting a phone call from him, um, and we were chatting, and I was just catching up with him, you know, asking how things were and everything. And he was actually calling to say, um, to tell me that he had forgiven me. And I didn't understand why, you know, I didn't understand what did I ever do to you that, that means that you forgive me. Um, but my words and the gossiping that I had done while I actually, I was in college at a Christian college, mind you, um, they had gotten back to him and they had really hurt him. And he had carried those hurtful words and insecurities with him for years after that. I didn't know the impact that my words had in his life. And he had called to tell me that though he at one point even went as far as saying that he hated me and hated being around me because of the person that I was, that he had chosen to forgive me. Guys, that destroyed me inside, knowing that my words that I had said behind somebody's back had really affected somebody in such a negative way. See, we, we all do this. You know, I'm not exempt from it because I'm a pastor or because I'm here in front of you guys um, or because I'm older. I did it and I feel terrible about it. And we know it's bad, but if we live in a culture that cherishes it, then how do we stop it? And so here's where we can turn to the Bible, because though it was written so long ago, we can still find wisdom there. You know, Paul was one of the most famous Christians of his time. He was dedicated to spreading the gospel to every corner of the world, loving people, planting churches and telling people about the good news. And he would often write letters to the churches he had planted. And eventually these letters would become books of the Bible that we know now. Now, one of these letters is called uh, it's the book of Ephesians, and it was written to the people in the church in a city called Ephesus. And now this type of city was a big melting pot type of city. And what I mean by that is that there were people from all different walks of life. There were poor people, rich people, believers, non-believers, people of different uh, uh, generational, um, you know, statuses, different ethnical uh, or ethnicities and things like that. So it was a big mixture of different people with different beliefs and different backgrounds. So this type of setting was actually the perfect fuel for gossip. You know, there's plenty to talk about to disagree on, to judge on. And in fact, the people that Paul is writing to, the Christians, would be really tempted to judge what they saw in the people of that town because there were plenty of non-believers. It would be super easy for them to gossip. But Paul wanted the Christians in Ephesus to operate differently than the rest of the town. So this is what he tells them. In Ephesians 4, 29, the first part of the verse, it says, Do not let any old unwholesome talk come from your mouth. Now, in this passage, Paul is making perfectly clear that unwholesome talk has no place in our lives. Now, some of us may read this and think he's talking about um, saying curse words or saying bad words. And I think that is true, but I also think that there is more to that. Um, so this letter was originally written in Greek. And if we look at the original word used for unwholesome, which is amphigenos, 
we see that another definition for this word is rotten. And I think that is a great way to describe uh, gossip. It actually rots the conversation. So talking trash or gossiping will literally rot a friendship, a relationship, or a reputation. And this isn't what we want to produce in our lives, is it? Now, we don't want to produce a rotten vibe. We want to talk others we want, we want to talk about others and participate in conversation without gossiping. Because when we do that, we are literally contributing to the rotting of relationships around us. In fact, not only that, but it could also be a sign of something going on within us whenever we gossip. Now, look at what Mark 7, 15 says. It, it's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. So according to Jesus, who's the person talking in this passage, what comes out of us is a representation of what is within us. So when we gossip, it actually speaks about us and who we are. And more than words, it's about the motivation that causes us to say these things. You know, it's an issue of the heart. Let's go back to Paul, though. He has an alternative for us. And he says in Ephesians 4.29, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful to building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. In other words, if we choose to put the needs of others in front of our own, then we think of others in, in, instead of ourselves, then we won't have time to actually judge them. We can conquer gossip. We will think about them before we talk about them. Now, this is a lot easier said than done. In a world where hating people is basically a pastime and could even be a profession, it's hard to be the guy or gal that chooses to be wholesome, over unwholesome. But it's also one of the best decisions you can make. And, and, and why is that? Because what you say about others says a lot about you. Um, think about it. We all know the people that live for gossip. You know the people that can't wait to share the latest piece of news with you, um, you know, whether it's negative or positive about somebody. And when you think of that person in your life, the only thing that you think about is how much they love talking about others. Now, on the other hand, we have the people that don't stand for gossip. Um, the people that as soon as that conversation gets rolling, they'll either put a stop to it or they'll walk away from that conversation altogether because they don't want to be part of that. They don't want to foster a community of gossiping. So when it comes to your communication, what is it that you want to say? How do you want people to recognize you and to know you? It's about, it's not about what you say. The question is, what do you want to be about? You know, do you want to be known as someone who loves others? Um, or do you want to be as known as a hater? Do you want to be known as a trash talker or do you want to be known as somebody that builds people up constantly? You know, we have the option, the option to choose. We're not stuck in our ways. You know, um, God gives us the power to be different. He wants people to be known for love and not hate. And just because gossip can be fun or humorous or normal, accepted in our world, it doesn't mean that it's always worth it and what it does to our character. You know, instead, you and I can be about something else. We can seek the reputation that Paul is talking about, you know, where we are known as people that build others and love others. We choose love over hate. Let love be what you are all about. And this starts before words are even a thing. It starts in deciding we care about somebody no matter what. And this will transfer to our words. We all have the ability to decide what we want to say. And sadly, sometimes we decide what we want to say by asking these following questions. This is the filter that we put in our words. Sometimes we say, well, will this make me look funny? Will this make me look cool? Will this make me look smart? Um, you know, is it mostly true? These filters will lead us to unwholesome, rotten words. Then that rottenness will spread into our relationships. So we need a new question to ask, a new filter to put our words through. And the one Paul poses is this, is this helpful? So try this today. As soon as you're done watching this and you have your next conversation, ask yourself this. Will these words be helpful? Will they build others up? Will they make someone's life better? When we use this filter, it won't matter how juicy the story is or how piping hot the proverbial tea is. If it isn't helpful, it's not worth our words. If we choose to be about love and use this filter, the words we should and shouldn't use will become really clear to us. 
Imagine living in that world where people let love be what they're all about. If we refuse to judge and talk bad about others and we choose to just love them. If we just focused on building each other up. I think this would impact every single class of person. Um, imagine what it could do for our church and the Christians, the Christians as a whole. If Christians were known to be about love and not hate like the rest of the world. It would be so much more appealing to people that didn't believe in God to believe in a God of these people that demonstrate love in everything that they do. All of us get to decide what we're all about. We're either about love or we're either about hate. So let's be about loving each other from now on. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. See ya.